Welcome to Straight Out of Savannah, Talking with Tammy, a podcast that showcases people you may not know who are choosing to use their gifts to inspire and move the planet. Thank you so much for joining us on Straight Out of Savannah. My guest, Alessia Minkus, is here and she is going to share with you who she is and you know what she's all about. So Alessia, take it away. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's uh, really a pleasure to be here and to be able to you know, serve your audience and you know, answer questions that might help them move things forward or might inspire them as well. Yes, yes, that is what's up. So what is it that you do um, for your um, life's work? Um, that's right. So, um, so funny enough, you might notice from my accent that I'm not a native English speaker. So I was born actually in Rome, Italy. Oh, really? And um, I grew up in a family of entrepreneurs, which people think that that would have inspired me to start a business. But turns out my parents were you know, those type of entrepreneurs that had started a business out of a big passion, but had no systems, no know-how, no little, you know, yeah. really leadership skills. <laughs> and so what I noticed, what I observed growing up was them um, really, you know, having created a, a job for themselves where they were mm -hmm. working very hard and yeah. having uh, not so good you know, results, like working a lot for little money. Mm -hmm. and so I wasn't very inspired by that, I'm <laughs> be honest with you at that time, um, so much that I had decided I would never own my own business in my life. I, would, I wanted to do something completely different. And then you know how life happens, right? Yes. Uh, you know, at some point something happens and, you know, you kind of fall into your path. Yes. And so that was happened to me because when I was 19 years old, my dad had a heart attack. Oh, wow. Just, you know, like. A totally a turning point in my life completely and at that time I mean likely you know he made it but the doctor said he needed to take six months kind of out of his life out of his business to really focus on his health in order to be able to be sustainable wow and that was like kind of like a lot of drama at that time I remember because yes. of course like again as I told you they, they didn't have systems they didn't have teams they didn't have and so it was like, how will this survive? Like, how will this actually work and move forward, et cetera? Yes. And mom, of course, wanted to be with my dad. And so it was very complex. And I remember we had a meeting with my mom and you know, some other people that were working for the company at that time. And somebody said, well, we would really need somebody to take the business and kind of keep it stable for six months mm -hmm. until, you know, my dad, Johnny, you know, comes back. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, Tammy, if you remember how naive you were at 19 years old, but I remember how naive I was mm -hmm. because during that meeting, I raised my hand mm -hmm. and I said, I'll do it. I mean, how difficult can it be? <laughs> um, and yeah, of course, I don't know about that. Yeah. Right. Well, of I course, I discovered I, that I, that was crazy. Like even just thinking about that was crazy. Yes. Um, so I started and so I took over my family business with at that time was actually generating about 10 million euro in revenue, very little, if anything, in profit. <laughs> and so it was a lot of work, very little money left and just like, you know, really being like busy, 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 busy. Yes. Not only that, but I knew nothing about that. And so a few weeks after starting this journey, like I started to see things go really, really bad. And that's when I understood that I really needed some help. Mm -hmm. um, and I got help. I mean, you know, as difficult as it was like 20 years ago in Italy, there weren't that many professional advisors and consultants, et cetera. So yes. I really had to kind of dive deep and figure things out, et cetera. But at some point, you know, I was able to piece things together and I found, you know, a system to start to actually, you know, have more freedom while I started to see the business kind of growing. And yeah. to make the long story short, in three years, we tripled the business, getting to 30 million euro revenue per year. 
uh, we as well, you know, finally we were able to have actually, you know, a very good profit, you know, a very good profitability. Yeah. And so it was actually a very fun journey. So fun that I got bit by the bug of entrepreneurship. <laughs> and over the next few years, I started seven other companies around Europe. They all get to go to seven and eight figures. And then in 2012, I met my current husband. And when I met him, he was um, well consulting and training business owners on how to grow their business. And he said, oh my gosh, you need to see, tell your system. You need to teach it. You need to help business owners. And so you now suddenly I transitioned again. <laughs> that was the second turning point. And I said, you know, I put CEOs in place, partners in place, some businesses, I exited them. And I moved to Australia where my husband was living at that time. Okay. And I started to teach, advise, consult business owners. And that's what I've been in the last 10 years. I've been doing that for 10 years now. And together, well, first of all, we took the business that my husband was already running as a um, as an advisor, uh, you know, speaker, coach, etc., and we grew that to eight figures. Uh, you know, we became one of the biggest um, business training company globally. Nice. We organized over two thousand events in thirty-two different countries. Spoke on stages as big as fifteen thousand people, with icons like Tony Robbins. Sir Richard oh, Branson, nice, nice. Les Brown, Lisa Nichols, you know, Kevin Harrington, Vishen Lakiani, Kim Kiyosaki, yeah. Randy Zuckerberg, and many more. And so that's been like a crazy ride. And then, well, and then COVID hit. And so the event stopped. Yes. <laughs> and so we were like, well, what do we do now? And we decided to create a, a couple of studios out of our office and start to do things virtually. And there's been, been a lot of fun, actually. We discovered that and it was great to be able to reach all these people still in all these countries, you know, in our programs and, you know, among our clients, we have people from over 60 different countries. Oh, nice. And we can do that now from home. So yes, yes. that's really cool. So yeah, that's what I do. And, I, and specifically, I specialize in really um, helping women-led companies scale to seven and eight figures because that's been my journey and my story and kind of my success. So I love giving back and actually helping other women achieving the same results and the same freedom, right? Because what I love is scaling sustainably, like scaling without being trapped in the business, but actually having the business really work for you. Yes, that is, that's, that's the piece. That is the piece because so many, I talked to so many entrepreneurs and so many of them are, you know, they're trapped in their business. It's like they built themselves a job. That's right. And so, yeah. And so that happens so often. And then they become the bottleneck to their own growth. Yes. So it's, it's frustrating, you know, on many multiple actually aspects because it's like, they're working a lot. They're not getting you know, the results that they want. They're not earning the money that they want. Actually, you know, there are some uh, studies that show that while most business owners start their business because they would like to have more freedom and more money, the reality is that when we track these business owners a few years down the line, we discover that most of them, the data I think says 95% of them would earn more money and have more free time if they would work for somebody else. Wow. I think it's very, very sad, right? It and then you know, my specific passion, of course, with women-led businesses, you know, makes me, you know, even more sensitive because, you know, women-led businesses in the US today represent about 40% of all businesses. And mm -hmm. yet only 4.2% of women-led businesses reach the seven-figure mark in revenue. And so it's a very tiny percentage if you think about that. So there are a lot of people that are stuck in a position where there isn't enough revenue for them to delegate, hire, create teams, and therefore have that leverage and freedom that yeah. they were dreaming of when they first started. So that's why I'm passionate about what I do, because I feel like, you know, when we can actually create that revenue bump, it creates mm -hmm. a lot of other opportunities. Like suddenly they can, you know, again, hire people, they can have yeah. systems, they can have freedom, they can start to actually really build their lifestyle 
through their business instead of having to work always around the business. And that 4.2% of the women that are making the seven figures includes like Oprah, right? <laughs> well, she's making Oprah. like Ellen, <laughs> you know, more than that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you, you think about that as like, okay, yeah, that includes Oprah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, it includes a lot of women, yeah, that are doing great stuff. And actually, right. funny enough, you know, um, I was looking recently at this statistic, and it says that in the last two years, um, I mean, first of all, women-led businesses have grown, like in terms of number of how many businesses there are, has grown faster than any other type of business. But as well, that the, um, you know, actually the groups that have had the, the, the most growth in terms of numbers are at the two extremes. So either micro businesses that, you know, really kind of like are starting and really struggle in terms of revenue or the multi-million businesses, the seven, the eight, nine figures, though that bone both really grown a lot. So there are a lot of women that are starting their business and, and yet they get stuck there but they once they figure it out, they can reach seven, eight, nine figure in the revenue. And of course, like it changes the whole game. So when you speak to your clients, um, because I can see that it probably would be some type of fear there, you know, even though you, you, you never want to admit that we never want to admit fear. Right. But I could see that it would be some type of fear there when you're scaling at that level, once you're already, you know, at six figures and then you're trying to scale to seven figures. Um, talk to me about how you um, talk to them at that level, because I know that, you know, there's like a, a level and this is why they probably reach out to you, you know, or someone like you, you know, they, they reach out because they're at this place where they know it's time for them to scale or they know they can see it. They can feel it, they can taste it, but some, something is, is keeping them from doing that. And I know that probably on a level it's fear. So yeah. talk to me about how you talk to them at this, this point. So the fun thing is that I come from a very like strategical background, um, you know, having actually run companies, strategized, created team, recruited them, trained them, managed them, et cetera. And at the same time, one of my passion has been personal development and leadership development for many, many years, more than I can remember. <laughs> and so what I work with them is really these two kind of, you know, I say we move on two tracks. I mean, first of all, they need to understand what they need to do strategically, because the fact is that what has helped them getting to six figures is not what is going to get them to seven and eight figures. They need to actually really change um, the way they look at their business, they run their business, they relate to their business. But then at the same time, they really need to grow as leaders in order to be able to manage the, you know, the new complexity in terms of systems, teams, people, and as well in terms of actually showing up as a leader in their marketplace. So I work on both things like, what they need to do strategically, what is the best plan, like kind of like roadmap and then execution and you know, resources, et cetera. And mm -hmm. at the same time, we really work on, on helping them become the leader that they know they want to become, they know they can be, and they really like aspire to be for themselves, for their business, and really for the marketplace. Because one thing that is very interesting is that Women are very, very community oriented. Mm -hmm. And so we know by the data, you know, that when a woman becomes more successful and actually has more money, more cash coming through her hands, more of that money comes back into the community. There is yeah. a lot of like giving back in many different ways. Yeah. So it's very important to really support women, I feel. And, and it's not a conversation of women versus men like you know i mean i have my business partner is my husband and i love him and i appreciate him and we have grown so much because of the integration of both of us so it's not about like women instead of men right but it's about having that equal representation so helping yeah. women actually having just as many seats at the table as men have right because that's when we can all win 
that's when we can kind of learn from each other and yeah. contribute in order to create more innovation, in order to create, um, you know, more change in the world. And we know that, you know, we need that now more than ever. Yes, that is so right. <laughs> yeah, we do. So um, when you and your husband work together, how has that been for your <laughs> I always get this question. <laughs> and so I remember years ago, you know, prior to COVID, we were running an event in, uh, um, in Singapore and we had invited as our, one of our guest speakers, Sir Richard Branson. Okay. And so we had, we had you know, thousands of people in the audience. It was a great event. And we had a group of our own um, mastermind students that had traveled from all over the world to be there because you know, they just wanted to be part of this great event. And we did a little session with them where we were kind of answering questions, et cetera. And at some point, somebody asked me, you know, they said, so tell us about working with your husband. And you know, of course, like, Putting up such a big event is, is very stressful. You know, you have a lot of like pressure. And so it, yes. it's complex. I mean, when, when everybody, when we are under, under stress, right? It's complex. Yeah. And just the day before we had received a, um, a gift <laughs> from a client. And it's a client that has a business that makes knives. Oh, <laughs> And so I was telling them, you know, I was telling them about that. Like my answer was, well, let's just put it this way. Yesterday we received this gift. We opened it and it was two knives, two like steak knives. Very beautiful, very, very nicely made. And when we received them and I opened them, I looked at them and I said, oh my gosh, Kane, luckily we did not have them last night. <laughs> 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 because the reality is that Working with your husband, I feel like it everything becomes extreme, meaning the good things become so much better. Like the good moments are so much better anytime you can share them, right? Mm -hmm. And when there are complex moments, there is pressure. It's not like you say, oh my gosh, like I have a really intense time at work. Now I go home and I change gears. No, like you take it with you <laughs> for right. dinner, no, in the bedroom, <laughs> in the kitchen, like everywhere, right? <laughs> So um, it definitely like enhances everything. Now, I think it's super worth it. I, I mean, I love it and I wouldn't have it any other way. And I think it's a great way to grow as a couple as well. And of yeah. course, it does require a lot of work on yourself um, in order to be able to you know, manage these situations the best way possible and show up in a way that, you know, it really, it becomes, you know, even the complex times become you know, a stepping stone. Uh, to achieve new greater heights together yes I could see that that yeah that yeah that would be something is what I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> oh I asked that question you know almost selfishly because that's something my husband and I are, are considering actually we're doing it <laughs> and it's like sometimes it feels good and sometimes yeah. it feels different <laughs> Well, I mean, that's true about everything though, right? Isn't it true about working alone? I mean, sometimes it feels good because you are having maybe some sort of result, success, and you feel yes. proud of yourself. But when things don't go well, you feel lonely and you feel like, you know, a little bit like isolated, like frustrated, and you don't have anything to share that with. So, you know, I feel like that's true for everything. I mean, everything in life has, you know, two sides. Yes, of, yes absolutely. Every coin has two sides. So. You just need to pick which two sides you want to have. Yes, yes. <laughs> you will yes. still have them. So um, I don't know. Again, you know, for me, I, I mean, I love work, running businesses in partnership. Um, I've owned to this day now, you know, um, nine different businesses. And I've always had partners. I mean, not always my husband, of course, because I didn't know him at the beginning. And because, you know, sometimes we have ventures that we do with somebody else. But but I've always had a partner because I just, I love the dynamic. Although, yes, it makes some things more complex. I feel like sharing the process, the journey, the growth and being able to bounce out ideas and being able to, yeah. um, you know, manage things together. It's just like completely different level. Yes. And for me, it's just, you know, it's, it's part of the fun of running a business is actually sharing it 
with somebody that you care about. I mean, normally all my business uh, partners have been, you know, people that I actually cared about personally, like friends and, um, you know, family or people that, you know, colleagues that I got to know. And there was really some sort of good connection where we were sharing some passion, some values. And so it made the whole journey so much more fun. See, and that's, that's a different thing right there that you just said, because um, I've talked to lots of people, but, um, and that was one of the things that most people are like, no, they don't want to run a business with somebody that they know, or somebody that they care about, or somebody, you know, friends and all that stuff. Matter of fact, it was one of the, the business advice things in, in an article that I read. And I was like, okay, they're like, no, you don't want to run it with your friends or with your family or nobody like that. And so, but I hear that you're saying something totally different that as you ran these businesses with people that you cared about, you know, they flourished. And I think that's probably one of the reasons because, you know, you guys, it was like you had your own personal mastermind. Well, yeah. Plus, you know, I feel like, of course, you're taking on, you know, a bigger responsibility. Mm -hmm. I mean, at that point, if you, you know, especially if you fail, it's not just about you. It's about somebody else. It's just like when you have a child. I don't know if you have children, but I have two children. Mm -hmm. The moment they are born, you understand that life is not just about you anymore. Yes. And if things don't go well, you are not even that worried about you anymore. You are really like thinking constantly about how can you make sure that they are protected, right? Yes, yes. So the same thing I feel is for a business. Of course, you are taking on a, a bigger responsibility, but on some levels, that's really what has driven me, for example. And I know my partner were just the same, like in really wanting to create results because, uh, you know, I felt like I wanted to make sure it was worth their time. I wanted to make sure, you know, if I would be running a business alone, which is why I don't, I know that maybe sometimes, you know, I would be a little bit more, I wouldn't say lazy, but, you know, maybe taking things a little bit slower because I would be like, ah, oh, it's okay. I mean, if it doesn't work this month, it's no problem. But now I have somebody else that is in the game with me. So yeah. I feel accountable. I feel, you know, responsible in a good way. Like I, I want to make sure that, you know, we are taking care of each other. Yes. And so I feel like that really um, has, has inspired a lot of action, a lot of fast movement, a lot of even taking risks. I mean, first of all, it's easier to take risks when you're not alone, right? I mean, I'm, and I'm not talking necessarily about physical risk, but like oh, emotional yeah. risk, right? That's Trying right. something new, launching mm -hmm. a new product, having yeah. a meeting with a new client. You know, you might feel a little bit at the beginning when you are new to the game, a little bit like, ah, oh, uh, but if you share with somebody, first of all, it's easier. And second, you know, now you're in together and you're like, I'm not going to disappoint them and just not show up. And so, you know, things kind of move faster. Uh, and yes, I mean, it, it does create a little bit more pressure because of that. But I think that, you know, if well managed in terms of, again, communication and leadership and, and really like introspection, like when you can look into yourself and make sure that you're aligned before you get into a partnership, then I think that it's actually a great like accelerator to create yeah. results faster. Yes, I, I totally agree with that. I, I believe that um, you were saying about when you're already in alignment, you know that you're in alignment with this person or this idea, whatever it is, um, how easy that is to move forward. You know, you you have a, a way where you don't want to procrastinate, and that that's what I that's what I heard you say. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, imagine that you know you are starting to run a business with your husband, mm -hmm. and now your whole family depends on that business. Right. I mean, there is no plan B. There is no option of allowing anything to stop you, because like, you, first of all, you can't afford it. <laughs> And you don't want that. You don't want that for him. You don't want that for you. And we know that, you know, although we don't want that for ourselves anyway, but, you know, being accountable to ourselves is the most difficult thing in life, right? Mm -hmm. We know that you know, every time we take, we make a commitment, a new year's resolution, if it's just about us, it's easy to slip yes. away from that, right? Exactly. But if there is somebody else in the game, then it's different. And again, you kind of, you know, I felt very often that by working with my husband specifically, you know, of all the partners, you kind of close the option of plan B. It's just like, you know, on some levels when you get married, right? I mean, before, like when you, maybe when you date, 
you know, you might be like, well, if this doesn't work out, you know, maybe I will date somebody else. But marrying, it's a little bit like, you know, crossing that line and saying there is no plan B. Like <laughs> this needs to work. <laughs> like we are in it together and we need to figure it out. <laughs> Unless you're my ex-husband. <laughs> <laughs> He had plan B all the time. <laughs> right. <laughs> I have plan B right now with my current husband. I got you. <laughs> well, I mean, even if things don't work out, I mean, you're responsible to kind of work that out between the two of you, right? Right. And especially if you have kids, like it's not like you can say, well, it didn't work out. We're not like you're responsible to actually work it out in a way that leaves everybody, you know, completed and whole, etc. So there is a responsibility that you have to the other person that, um, you know, that, that definitely kind of holds you up to a different standard right, right. than it's, you would have if it's just about you. It's the difference between why someone would stay and they probably should leave, you know, <laughs> because you're thinking about, you know, the kids, even though that never works out and people always know because kids always know. I mean, kids can tell when there's animosity in the house and all this stuff. And so, you know, but a lot of women do that. They say, you know what, I'm going to stay because, you know, we have these kids and, you know, we got to raise. Well, sad enough, a lot of women do that as well because they are scared. I mean, again, because a lot of women are actually, and that's, that's actually part of my mission. I mean, funny enough that you mentioned that without even knowing, but so I come from, a, 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 you know, a family where my grandmother was a very strong, very talented woman, never learned how to take her talents and turn them into a real business for herself. And therefore, she never felt comfortable and confident that she could potentially leave her relationship and take care of herself and her kids. And that, uh, you know, brought her to actually points where they were, she was accepting all sorts of compromises that no woman should accept like, for example, staying in a relationship that wasn't respectful of who she was. Mm -hmm. And she did it because, you know, she wanted to protect her kids and she wanted to, uh, you know, she wanted to make sure they were taken care of. And she didn't feel like she could do that. Right. That's actually one of the drives. You know, people sometimes ask me why you're so passionate about women-led businesses, because I have kind of touched with my own, you know, on my own skin, I've had the experience of what it means for a woman to not feel empowered. It's not, I mean, my work is not just about business. You know, I, I, at least that's not how I relate to it. I mean, I support women in growing their businesses, but therefore I support them on really taking control of their life and knowing that they can make any choice they need to make in order to feel safe um, and feel respected and feel like they're living the life that they deserve because they don't ever need to worry whether they will be able to sustain that financially. Yes. So I feel like that's that's very important. That's really like part of, again, my mission, part of why I do what I do. It's because I know that that can make such a big difference, you know, in, in a woman's life. And even more, I mean, I have a really sweet spot for kids. So, you know, I am very, very connected to the difference that it makes for a child. Um, yes. To grow up with a role model of a mom that is secure, is confident, um, you know, he knows that if she is in a relationship, if she's in any situation, it's because she chooses to, not because she feels like she has no choice. Yes, yes, because so many times, you know, just like you said, women are doing these things out of obligation. And that to me is such a deeper mission um, mm -hmm. for you because, and I knew there was something deeper. <laughs> just waiting <laughs> for it to come out but I knew that was a deeper mission um, as far as supporting the women because you know people do that all the time there are lots of people that do that however I knew that there was something different in the way that you support women you know and the mission behind it is what it is and that's like so powerful because there are so many women out there just like your grandma with all these skills and you know just you know, don't turn it into what it should be, you know, right. I mean? like it should right. be a big, and that's really thing. sad. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I'm with you and I'm, I'm the same as far as, um, my grandmother was amazing and she was 
oh my God, she was a healer of healers. And I feel privileged to be able to take up that mantle from her. And I knew I was supposed to be the one to do it. You know how you, you're you wondering who in the family is going to take this mm. mantle because it was so powerful. And she was, girl, she was four nine, <laughs> but she was a powerhouse probably. Yeah, it's a powerhouse. And it's like, oh my God. So I think about that. Um, it actually inspired me to write a book. So I have a book that I'm filling, multi-author, about um, stories about gr- our grandmothers. Oh, and that's awesome. Yeah, so I'm excited about that because I, I got the idea to write the story. And then I got the idea to open it up and share it and let other people come and share stories about their grandmother, especially in this time, because it's so crazy out there. And every news story you see and everything you see is like death and murder and COVID and all this crap. And it's like, can we read something that makes us feel good? Can yeah, we, we need good them? stories. We need positive yes. stories. We need inspiration. Yes. So that to me is like powerful that you were inspired by your grandmother to make sure that women are taken care of as far as business, because just like you said, it's, it's a whole mindset. You know, if you haven't had anybody to encourage you, you know, or you haven't figured out a way to encourage yourself or even to find out what it is that you want, because Mm -hmm. that is one of the major things that I see with a lot of people. They just don't really know what they want. And so, you know, you have to take that time to just figure that out, you know, or, you know, if you're like a lot of people to sit down and talk to spirit and say, you know, you know, or to even take inventory of what it is that you are good at, you know, what you're supposed to do. That's know. right. But anyway, so do you have a program or anything that you are feeling right now that you'd like to share with the people? Well, so I run a company that um, is focused specifically on women and it's called Deals in Heels. Mm, so, nice. You know, and um, so if, there is actually a, a Facebook forum that if women want to have support and you know be updated on everything that we do in order to support women in business specifically, they can join it and it's called Deals in Heels Live Events. So uh, you know I invite everybody to join there. We share a lot of um, you know videos, interviews, free resources. Um, you know we do fr- free events every once in a while to actually you know just help women sharing different techniques on how they can take their business and really scale it to the next level um, in order to be able to, you know, have again, more of that freedom and more of that abundance that they were dreaming about when they started and they actually deserve it. So it's really important that they get the right tools in order to achieve that. Yes, that is so perfect because the thing is, is people are always looking for information. (laughs) And there's information everywhere. And Google, I mean, I went to look up something. It was 12 years ago. (laughs) So I was like, that's right. Wow. Um, And, you know, we always say everything that we share, we try to not share like individual pieces of information because I feel like that's what you find a lot of. Then you need to piece it together and understand how does it work all together. So we are very careful, everything that we share, creating real systems where you know, if we are sharing a, a resource, whether it's a video, I don't know, a checklist, a workbook, uh, whatever, right? Um, mm-hmm. In order to solve a problem, there is kind of like the whole system to go from A to Z and have that one problem solved. Yes. Because I feel like, again, sometimes we find so many information online. And first of all, they can be, you know, different. <laughs> and then you try to put them together. And because they don't actually fit together as a system, things then don't work out. Mm-hmm. So we are very, very methodical in making sure that we create system, systems that people can apply and follow like a recipe, right? Um, so instead of just saying, well, if you want chicken, you can grill it. And then maybe, you know, what you want to do is a soup and it doesn't work. Instead, we do a recipe, like what do you do from the moment you have the raw chicken to the moment you actually have the chicken soup in your, in your bowl? So you follow the process and you have the result. That is awesome. That's awesome. All right. So we're going to wrap up. Let the people know where they can connect with you. 
Yeah, so again, on Facebook, they can find Deals in Heels live events, or they can find my um, my website. It's alessiaminkus.com, my name. So that's very easy. And there they can as well find all the links to connect uh, and as well to download free resources, etc. That is so powerful. All right. So we'll have all of that also in the show notes. So you're able to, you know, click on it and all that. And I am so grateful and appreciative of Alessia joining me. It's been an amazing conversation, just like I knew it would, just like all the other conversations. So make sure that you are following us, follow her on Facebook. You can follow me anywhere that you find me, (laughs) Um, but make sure that you're following her so that you can get more information and more tools to help you if you are a woman in business. So again, thank you so much for joining us on straight out of savannah thank you so much well thank you for having me you're so welcome and thank you for coming and sharing all of this goodness (laughs) (laughs) i know you've been blown away with the amazing valley here today now go out and inspire the planet and be sure to send us a message when you're ready to come talk about it on straight out of savannah talking with tammy